Good morning. Naval War College community, family, friends, and guests, welcome. I am Captain Doherty, the Dean of Students and the MC for today's ceremony. Before the ceremony starts, I'd like to provide a few administrative remarks. At this time, please silence your cell phones and all electronic devices. There is no smoking allowed in or around the tent. Please take a moment to locate your nearest exit. In the event of a medical emergency, medical personnel are stationed at the back of the tent and at the museum parking lot. For your convenience, there are portable restrooms located down the hill near the Officers Club parking lot. Naval War College photographers will be documenting the event and photos will be posted on the college's Flickr account following the ceremony. In order to keep the aisles clear for students and in accordance with safety requirements, please do not take photos from the center aisle or in front of the stage. Additionally, this ceremony is being recorded and will be available on YouTube early next week. Thank you and welcome. Good morning and welcome to the United States Naval War College graduation ceremony for the class of 2024. Guests are asked to remain seated for student and faculty processions. The faculty procession will be led by the faculty marshal, Professor Charles Chadbourne, and the provost, Dr. Stephen Mariano. The 58 nations representing the graduating class are the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria, Argentine Republic, Commonwealth of Australia, Kingdom of Bahrain, People's Republic of Bangladesh, the Federal Republic of Brazil, Republic of Bulgaria, Canada, Republic of Chile, Republic of Colombia, Republic of Croatia, Republic of Djibouti, Republic of Ecuador, the Arab Republic of Egypt, the Republic of Estonia, the French Republic, the Federal Republic of Germany, Republic of Ghana, the Hellenic Republic, the Republic of India, Republic of Indonesia, the State of Israel, the Italian Republic, Jamaica, Japan, the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, Republic of Korea, the State of Kuwait, the Republic of Latvia, Republic of Lithuania, Malaysia, United Mexican States, the Kingdom of Morocco, the Kingdom of the Netherlands, New Zealand, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Kingdom of Norway, the Sultanate of Oman, the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, the Republic of Panama, Republic of Peru, Republic of the Philippines, Republic of Poland, Romania, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the Republic of Senegal, the Republic of Singapore, the Kingdom of Spain, the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka, the Kingdom of Sweden, Taiwan, the Kingdom of Thailand, the Republic of Tunisia, the Republic of Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, the United States of America, and the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. The U.S. government, armed services, agencies, and organizations represented in the graduating class are United States Navy, United States Army, United States Marine Corps, United States Air Force, United States Space Force, United States Coast Guard, United States Army National Guard, United States Air National Guard, Central Intelligence Agency, 
Defense Contract Management Agency, Defense Counterintelligence and Security Agency, Defense Intelligence Agency, Defense Security Cooperation Agency, Defense Senior Leadership Development, Defense Threat Reduction Agency, Department of the Air Force, Department of the Army, Department of the Army Office of the Chief of Public Affairs, Department of Defense, Department of Defense Office of the Inspector General, Department of Health and Human Services, Department of Homeland Security, Department of Justice, Department of the Navy, Department of State, Department of Justice, Executive Office of Chemical, Biological, and Radiological and Nuclear Defense, Federal Bureau of Investigation, Government Accountability Office, National Cemetery Administration, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, Naval Air Systems Command F-35 Joint Program Office, Navy Criminal Investigative Service, Naval Special Warfare Command, Naval Surface Warfare Center, Naval Undersea Warfare Center, Navy Medicine Readiness and Training Command, Navy Recruiting Command, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Office of the Chief of Naval Operations, Office of Naval Intelligence, Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering, Privacy and Civil Liberties, Liberties Oversight Board, Program Executive Officer Aircraft Carriers, U.S. Agency for International Development, U.S. Border Patrol, U.S. China Economic and Security Review Commission, United States Commission on Security and Cooperation in Europe, United States House of Representatives, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, U.S. Marshal Service, United States Naval War College, United States Secret Service, United States Senate, United States Special Operations Command.
Please rise for the arrival of the official party. Honors to Admiral Scott H. Swift, United States Navy retired, the national anthem, and remain standing through the invocation. the colors. The national anthem will be sung by musician first class Holden Moyer from the Navy Band Northeast. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars to the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Retire the colors.
Commander Robert Fosnott, Command Chaplain, Naval Station Newport, will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Creator of the wind and waves, today we celebrate with these students who will return to their homes to provide a global impact to ensure peace by sea power. We pause to honor the accomplishments of the partnerships forged, wisdom bestowed, and the visions created. May you be pleased with all that is said and done. Lord, you have called us to love our neighbors as ourselves, to pursue justice, to act mercifully, and to walk humbly with our God. May the way these leaders have learned to strategically think accomplish that divine mission. Bless our friends and families. Bless these graduates. In all your holy names we pray, amen. Please be seated. All military members, please uncover at this time. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the members of our official party. Captain Jeffrey DeMarco, Deputy Chair, Strategy and Policy. Captain John Parado, Chair, Joint Military Operations. Dr. Derek Reveron, Chair, National Security Affairs. Dr. Paul Brister, Dean, Center for Naval Warfare Studies. Rear Admiral Retired Edward Cashman, Dean, College of Maritime Operational Warfare. Professor Pauline shanks Curran, College of Leadership and Ethics. Dr. Stephen Pierce, Interim Dean, College of Distance Education. Professor Thomas Mangold, Dean of International Programs. Dr. Doyle Hodges, Dean of Academics. Dr. Stephen Mariano, Provost. Admiral Scott H. Swift, United States Navy Retired. And Rear Admiral Peter A. Garvin, the 58th President of the United States Naval War College. It is my honor to present Rear Admiral Garvin. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. And as I like to say, it is a fine Navy day. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge our CNO Distinguished Fellows, Admiral Barrera, Admiral Verma, great to see you as always. Admiral Swift, a fantastic treat to have you with us today, sir. Thank you for speaking. Captain Rocky, where are you, sir? Over here. All right, thanks, Henry. The partnership here to put this together, what the base has done, simply fantastic. So thank you for the great work. Dr. Carla Thomas, one of our Education for Sea Power Advisory Board subcommittee members. Ms. Ann Joslin, the great grandniece of our founder, Admiral Stephen B. Luce. Always great to see you. And one of our local government officials, retired Captain Rayner of the town of Portsmouth. To the Naval War College Foundation, Chairman Dan Holland and his wife Debbie. Chief Executive Officer George Lang, his wife Wendy. The Foundation staff and the members of the Naval War College Foundation, thank you for your unwavering support and thank you for being here today. Admirals, generals, and all the honored guests, both here and online, welcome and thank you for joining us. To our provost, deans, faculty, and staff, thank you for setting high standards of academic excellence. To our dedicated families, friends, and loved ones, your love, support, and resilience empower these warfighters to serve their nation. As your graduates have likely heard me say before, family, friends, shipmates are not only the reason we serve, but the reason we are able to serve. And I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to recognize that today is the United States Army's 249th birthday. So happy birthday, Army, and on 364 days a year, I'm your best friend. <laughs> but that one day in December, we're going to fight. And now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Admiral Scott Swift. In 2015, he became the 35th commander of the United States Pacific Fleet, comprised of 140,000 sailors and 200 ships. 
He has commanded at every level, Strike Fighter Attack Squadron 97, Carrier Air Wing 14, Carrier Strike, Strike Group 9, and the United States 7th Fleet. Since retiring, Admiral Swift's contributions as a highly qualified expert for the Naval War College have been instrumental in shaping the future of naval strategy and education. His expertise and insights have guided countless students and serving practitioners, leaving a lasting impact on the field. Put simply, he continues to serve our nation incredibly well as we navigate the incredibly tumultuous waters now and moving forward. So please join me in welcoming Admiral Scott Swift. Admiral Garvin, thank you for that kind and generous introduction. I've had the enviable position of admiring your accomplishments over this past year, and it's quite extraordinary how quickly you came up to speed and brought the college along with you to today, the culminating point in this institution's performance this year. As we look across the assembled graduating class, I can't help but see the class as looking through a window into the future. And from where I stand, that future is bright. And your fingerprints are all over it. I know your time remaining as president is limited. And I also know that the CNO and chairman have more consequential work for you to do. I know those tasks might be daunting to some, but to you, but not to you, especially with Cheryl by your side. I do want to call out a few others for recognition as a bit of a double tap to Pete's opening comments. First is Provost Mariano. He has an extraordinarily difficult job, as most provosts do, but even more so having to balance the seven colleges across this campus and the unique challenges here at the Naval War College in balancing traditional advanced graduate education with advanced warfighting programs. Stephen, you are doing a masterful job. Personally, I want to thank you for your open door approach to your wise counsel to me, frank critique of my thinking, and proactive nature to push against status quo to achieve status progress. Lastly, I too want to highlight the work of the Naval War College Foundation, led by Chairman Holland and retired Captain uh, George Lang as CEO the foundation bridges the gap between the tasks the War College is charged with accomplishing and the resources granted to achieve them. The day-to-day -day accomplishments of the college would not be possible were it not for the stalwart work and gracious and generous contributions of the foundation. Becoming a member of the foundation is an opportunity to ensure that generous work of bridging resource gaps continue for those who will follow you here in the future. So, to the graduating class. First, congratulations. Second, I recognize today is not about me, it's about you. I do want to share with you what my education here meant to me, something I did not appreciate when I sat in your seat 30 years ago, hard to believe. My hope is that my comments will be useful in shortening your learning curve and applying your education here in meaningful ways. I'll make two broad points on what I missed about the value of my education here until much later in my career and share some recommendations I wish I had not taken so long to discover on my own. Point one. While standing on a foundation of practical experience and expertise in the world of science of warfare, master the art of warfare. When I arrived here, I was well versed in the science of warfare. I found my education on the art of warfare interesting, but I did not find it fascinating because I did not understand the context in which it applied to my follow-on tours until four tours later, four command tours later, as an air wing commander. Point two, science is objective, art is subjective. Science is made up of ones and zeros, yes, no, black, white, right, wrong, left, right. 
Art is not math. It is maybes. It is depends. It is it depends. Uncertainty and instability. Best guesses and uncertain outcomes. Marginal success and catastrophic failure. It is scary stuff, especially if you are the commander with the authority and responsibility for the decisions being made. So what to do? The six recommendations to consider. Number one, tap back into what you have learned here. Number two, process is more important than product. Your diploma is a product, an outcome of a process. Don't treat it as a commodity. Treat it as a license to explore beyond the safety of objective science to the frontier of subjective art. If you can't get out of your comfort zone, strive to make your comfort zone bigger. Much of warfighting is about forcing your adversary out of their comfort zone and ensuring they can't achieve the same with you. Process will help you. Process ensures products of value can be reproduced at scale. The production process here at the War College is an example of such scale. Producing this graduating class with the skills necessary to lead successfully in an unstable and uncertain world. Processes you have been exposed to here will help you turn these attributes, instability and uncertainty, into assets. It is through this process that great wars are won and through which great warriors are recognized for their willingness to embrace risk as a resource and failure as a milestone of learning on the road to victory. Number three, intolerance of risk, unacceptance of failure as accelerants to individual and organizational learning are indicators of an organization or leadership in stasis, one at risk of being unable to learn fast enough to win in war. This is what decision superiority is made up of, high velocity learning. Without decision superiority, the ability to apply organizational talents in times of conflict is limited, increasing the risk of catastrophic failure. Number four, you are promoting to levels of leadership where it is incumbent to think strategically, plan operationally, and act tactically. This is the domain of the art of warfare. The War College has provided you all the tools needed to thrive in that environment. It is up to you to apply them. Do not fall into the trap of thinking, planning, and acting tactically and wondering why you can't get ahead of the threat curve. This is the world you lived in when you arrived in Newport, one based on the science of warfare. It is largely the world you will return to. Make a difference. Live at the edge of knowledge, pressing into the world of instability and uncertainty, the world of it depends and maybe. In our Navy, we speak of ourselves in the context of honor, courage, and commitment. Those concepts are core to who we are. There are two other concepts that are of particular value in the application of the art of war. They are my fifth and sixth recommendations. Number five, humility. As you enter into the positions of leadership at the operational level, you will probably not be the smartest individual in the room. The intellect in the rooms that you will occupy will be stunning. Recognize and take advantage of it. Tap into that intellect. Be the first to listen and the last to speak. Stand on your career experience and the education here to critically and collectively critique concepts and ideas without criticizing individuals and organizations. You open the door to knowledge within the room by being humble. The room will look to you for guidance. You will always retain the authorities and responsibility of the position you occupy. Respect is a byproduct of what you do with those authorities and responsibilities. Those in the room are consistently looking to you for answers 
and you probably have not, if, if they are looking to you for answers, you have probably not sufficiently empowered them to think. A tool of empowerment is to ask, what do you think? When delivered sarcastically, it is, its connotation is one of arrogance. When delivered with sincerity, its connotation is humility. Number six, if the concept of humility didn't challenge your thinking, this one might. Vulnerability. We want to be a magnet for ideas of the real experts in the room, the warfare scientists, those whose expertise and most recent experience is from the tactical edge, at the edge of the wilderness of knowledge and understanding. They are your connection to the black swans and blind spots that are formed from arrogance, from an attitude of, I am senior, I have more experience, I have more authority, all of which may be true, but are not relevant to the process of thinking and planning. Arrogance builds barriers to the intellectual knowledge within the room. Remember, Black swans and blind spots are not unique to individuals and organizations that are closed to new ideas and alternative views. They are eminently discoverable. If you are humble in the value you place in yourself and vulnerable in the seeking the wisdom of the intellectual capital in the room, you will succeed. Earlier I mentioned the power of asking what do you think? This is the second most powerful way to tap into the intellect within the room. The most powerful way, when asked and appropriate, is to bring your power to their truth by being comfortable saying, I don't know. And the answer to that question is what we are here to discover together. This is vulnerability applied. For leaders who are confident in themselves, humility comes naturally as does the courage to be vulnerable. We have come full circle back to the honor, courage, and commitment. It takes courage for you to set the example of inclusive leadership, applying the concepts of humility and vulnerability where appropriate. It takes commitment on your part to make these concepts part of your organizational fabric. It is an honorable pursuit. Let me close with a quote that I think you can relate to. The function of leadership is to produce more leaders, not more followers. Now, those of you who don't know the source of this quote, imagine who it might be. A Naval War College president speaking on the value of the Naval War College, a service chief, a foreign secretary, a, a foreign a minister of defense, a secretary of defense. It was made in December of 2020 not too long ago, by a leader well-versed in the science and art of warfare, though in a different domain. Ralph Nader made that comment. Guard yourself against intolerance of risk within yourself and organizations you lead. Guard against the unacceptance of failure as arrogance and be open-minded to new ideas and alternative views regardless of source. So once again, Congratulations. May you be blessed with the same opportunities and circumstance that I have had throughout my career. I am confident if you remain guided by your experience here at the Naval War College, you will find it as professionally and emotionally rewarding as I have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Admiral Swift, for your remarks, and thank you for your participation in the ceremony and your support of this college. Awards will now be presented to students who have distinguished themselves through their exceptional achievement during their time in Newport. Rear Admiral Joseph C. Strasser International Leadership Prizes recognize the international officers from the senior and intermediate cl class who best embraced Admiral Arleigh Burke's vision of international programs as a place for naval officers from around the world to foster trust, confidence, friendship, and international cooperation, and advance those principles among their classmates while at the U.S. Naval War College. 
Mr. Daniel E. Holland III, Chairman, Naval War College Foundation, will present the awards. The Rear Admiral Joseph C. Strasser Naval Staff College International Leadership Prize winner is Lieutenant Commander Eduardo Luzzi, Italian Navy. The Rear Admiral Joseph C. Strasser Naval Command College International Leadership Prize winner is Captain Sandro Montero, Brazilian Navy. Each year, the Navy League of the United States presents two awards, one to a graduate of the College of Naval Warfare and one to a graduate of the College of Naval Command and Staff. These awards are given in memory of Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce and Admiral William S. Sims, respectively. Admiral Luce was the first president of the Naval War College, and Admiral Sims was president of the Naval War College at two points in his distinguished career. Recipients of this award are chosen based on their outstanding achievement across a spectrum of disciplines, including academic performance, participation in Naval War College activities, participation in civic and community activities, and promotion of the armed services in the public interest. Mr. Thomas Feeney, past president, Newport County Council of the Navy League of the United States, will present the awards. The William S. Sims Award for the Distinguished Graduate of the College of Naval Command and Staff is presented to Major Grace Butler, United States Space Force. The Stephen B. Luce Award for the Distinguished Graduate of the College of Naval Warfare is presented to Colonel Alexander Goodnow, United States Marine Corps. Please join us in congratulating all of the award winners for their outstanding efforts and performance. We will now begin the presentation of graduates. 
Naval Command College, please rise and remain standing. College of Naval Warfare, please rise and remain standing. <laughs> Naval Staff College, please rise and remain standing. <laughs> Naval, College of Naval Command and Staff, please rise and remain standing. College of Distance Education, please rise and remain standing. <laughs> Admiral Garvin, I have the honor to present the United States Naval War College Class of 2024. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. By the authority of the Secretary of the Navy, the accreditation of the New England Commission of Higher Education and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I confer upon you all appropriate degrees and diplomas from the United States Naval War College with all rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Please join me in, again in congratulating the class of 2024. Graduates, please be seated. Graduates will now receive their diplomas. Beyond the requirements for graduation, certain individuals have distinguished themselves through academic excellence. A diploma with highest distinction is presented to the top 5% of each graduating class. A diploma with distinction is presented to the next 15% of each graduating class. Graduates will proceed to the stage as their name is read. Please hold your applause until all names have been read so that all names and recognitions may be heard. From the College of Naval Warfare, Colonel Drew Abel, United States Army. From the Naval Command College, Lieutenant Colonel Abdel Hafid Harbash, Algerian Naval Forces. Commander Tuesday Adams, United States Navy. Commander Claudio Otero, Argentine Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Frederick Bobata, United States Army. Commander Michael Power, Royal Australian Navy. Colonel David Bennett, United States Air Force. Captain Saeed Faraj, Royal Bahrain Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Erica Besser, United States Army National Guard. Captain Sandro Montero, Brazilian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Nicholas Bolota, United States Army. Captain Daniel Todorov, Bulgarian Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Blackstone, United States Air Force Reserve. Captain Jacob French, Royal Canadian Navy. Captain Martin Bra, United States Navy. Commander Federico Cavara, Chilean Navy. Captain Lisa Brennan, United States Navy. Commander Maria Fuentes, Colombian Navy. Colonel Patricia Brown, United States Army National Guard with distinction. Captain Dario Yurko, Croatian Navy. Commander Nicholas Bullard, United States Navy. Commander Oscar Barrio Nuevo, Ecuadorian Navy. Mr. Micah Carpenter, Defense Senior Leadership Development Program with distinction. Commander Melo Raul, French Navy. Lieutenant Colonel William Chang, United States Air Force. Commander Daniel Ledzer, German Navy. Colonel Alan Chu, United States Marine Corps. Captain Isaac Aratuo, Ghana Navy. Lieutenant Colonel James Colvin, United States Marine Corps Reserve. Captain Soterius Masikas, Hellenic Navy. 
Commander Peter Cornett, United States Navy, with highest distinction. Captain Audit Putnick, Indian Navy, with distinction. Mr. Brian Cottle, United States Special Operations Command. Colonel Dodi Hermanto, Indonesian Navy. Captain Devere Crooks, United States Navy, with highest distinction. Commander Omer Rabiner, Israeli Navy. Mr. Mark Dalton, Naval Underwater Warfare Center. Captain Massimo Petrica, Italian Navy. Captain Jessica Davila, United States Coast Guard. Captain Yuchiro Kashiwagi, Japan Maritime Self Defense Force. Commander Jason Dawson, United States Navy. Commander Young Han Park, Republic of Korea Navy. Lieutenant Commander Joseph Deering, United States Navy. Brigadier General Khaled Al Reyes, Kuwait Naval Force. Mr. Anthony Deaton, Department of State, with distinction. Colonel Sanders Goggers, National Armed Forces of Latvia. Commander Nicholas Dvorak, United States Navy. Commander Alexander Guadarrama, Mexican Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Dick, United States Army Reserve. Captain Falala Jussi Zalaji, Royal Moroccan Navy. Colonel Michael Dyer, United States Army. Commander Andy Mahoney, Royal New Zealand Navy. Commander Brian Ellis, United States Navy. Captain Kolawali Lawal, Nigerian Navy. Commander Michael Irwin, United States Navy Reserve. Commander Martha Hess, Royal Norwegian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Deanna Farris, United States Air National Guard. Captain Atif Sultan, Pakistan Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Benjamin Fiala, United States Marine Corps. Captain Manuel Zuniga, Peruvian Navy. Commander Joshua Fisher, United States Navy. Commander Christian De Jesus, Philippine Navy. Ms. Emily Fleckner, Department of State. Captain Alexander Abonowitz, Polish Navy. Captain Christopher Forch, United States Navy. Captain Emmanuel Unguranu, Romanian Naval Forces. Lieutenant Colonel David Garner, United States Army National Guard. Commander Haitham El Kathiri, Royal Saudi Naval Forces. Lieutenant Colonel Bradley Gates, United States Army. Commander Abdu Gumbala, Senegalese Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Curtis Goller, United States Army National Guard with distinction. Captain Santiago Martinez, Spanish Navy. Colonel Alexander Goodno, United States Marine Corps with highest distinction. Commodore Dumindu Abiwakrama, Sri Lanka Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Kyle Han, United States Marine Corps. Commander Chi Huang Chung, Taiwan Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Halton, United States Marine Corps. Commander Panupong Jamruanvong, Royal Thai Navy. Ms. Rebecca Hamill, United States Agency for International Development. Captain Monsef Hamuda, Tunisian Navy. Ms. Megan Harris, Department of State with distinction. Commander Irfan Ugul, Turkish Navy. Ms. Laura Hemming, Defense Senior Leadership Development Program. Colonel Nasser El Nuaimi, United Arab Emirates Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Terrence Henderson, United States Air Force with highest distinction. Commander James Baker, Royal Navy. Captain Karen Herko, United States Navy Reserve, with distinction. Colonel Jesper Steubendorf, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Colonel Corey Hogue, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Colonel Richard Becker, United States Army. Ms. Amy Holmes, Defense Senior Leadership Development Program. Lieutenant Colonel John Fulton, United States Marine Corps. Colonel David Holmstead, United States Army. Commander Alana Garris, United States Navy. Commander Gordon Hood, United States Coast Guard. From the Naval Staff College, Commander Thomas Garrity, Royal Australian Navy. Commander William Hubner, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Khaled Boussan, Royal Bahraini Navy. Commander Syed Hussein, United States Navy Reserve. Major Mohammed Zain al Din, Bahrain Coast Guard. Colonel Michael Inman, United States Army. 
Commander Shakur Mahmood, Bangladesh Navy. Colonel Barry Jackson, United States Army National Guard. Commander Alberto Ferreira, Brazilian Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Justin Gerald, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Zoltan Zaltev, Bulgarian Navy. Commander Andrew Jones, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Ciro Reyes, Colombian Navy. Mr. Donald Jones, United States Special Operations Command. Lieutenant Sonia Chesa, Croatian Navy. Captain Joshua Jones, United States Navy. Lieutenant Omed Kakol, Djiboutin Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Russell Jones, United States Army. Commander Fouad Al-Hadeen, sorry, Egyptian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Paul Julian, United States Air Force with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Ray Lukes, Estonian Navy. Commander Nicholas Kadlik, United States Navy with highest distinction. Commandant Junior Grade Pratik Bardhan, Indian Coast Guard. Mr. Wesley Casper, Defense Senior Leadership Development Program. Lieutenant Commander Nikhil Prubain, Indian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Garrett K, United States Army with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Uniardi Samekta, Indonesian Navy. Ms. Gwen Kessler, Defense Intelligence Agency. Lieutenant Commander Guy Arazi, is Israeli Navy. Lieutenant Commander Douglas Kettler, United States Navy with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Eduardo Luzzi, Italian Navy with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Kevin Killeen, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Michael Grant, Jamaican Defense Force Coast Guard. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Keister, United States Army Reserve. Major Mohammed Khalifa, Jordan Armed Forces. Lieutenant Colonel Aaron Kaiser, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Yunho Choi, Republic of Korea Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Jason Kruptovich, United States Army Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Phil Ko, Republic of Korea Navy. Colonel Rick, Ricky Q, United States Army National Guard. Lieutenant Commander Jesseng Park, Republic of Korea Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Lacavera, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant, or correction, Commander Ahmed Algare Bali, Kuwait Naval Force. Mr. Johnny Lercy, Department of the Army. Commander Junior Grade Valdez Andersons, Latvia Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Janae Lake, United States Air National Guard. Donata Skechis, Lithuanian Navy. Commander Kara Langford, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Izani Hamunradin, Royal Malaysian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Gregory Larson, United States Army Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Rihel Martinez, Mexican Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Whitney Lee, United States Air Force Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Abdul Karim Beshu, Royal Moroccan Navy. Lieutenant Commander Kevin Lumen, United States Navy with distinction. Major Yurian Abba, Netherlands Marine Corps. Captain Paul Mangini, United States Coast Guard. Lieutenant Commander Salim Babangida, Nigerian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Drew Malsby, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Martin Trones, Royal Norwegian Navy. Ms. Kristen May, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Lieutenant Commander Khaled Altubi, Royal Navy of Oman. Lieutenant Colonel Cameron McCoy, United States Marine Corps Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Abdullah Akram, Pakistan Navy. Commander James McDowell, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Leonel Rodriguez, Panama Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Sean Meyer, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant Commander Santiago Boscanas, Peruvian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Menashe, United States Air Force with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Dante Membrier, Philippine Navy. Captain Stacy Malavik, United States Navy. Lieutenant Rafael Kozlowski, Polish Navy. Lieutenant Colonel John Moran, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Alan Gione, Romanian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Pavitra Murthy, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Abdulaziz Abusare, Royal Saudi Naval Forces. Colonel Andrew Nywaner, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Abdulrahma Al Gusar, Royal Sa Saudi Armed Forces. Mr. Brian Olson, Department of the United States Air Force. 
Commander Faisal Amaro, Royal Saudi Naval Forces. Commander Brandy Orton, United States Navy with distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Shanzi Thea, Republic of Singapore Navy with highest distinction. Commander Christopher Ossipower, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Hieronimo de Agate, Spanish Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Princess Palacios, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Danushka Madusha, Sri Lanka Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Pasco, United States Air Force with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Adam Linder, Royal Swedish Navy. Dr. Harley Pierce, Department of State with distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Cheng Chia, Taiwanese Navy. Lieutenant Commander Adam Pennington, United States Navy. Lieutenant Wachawat Panutapun, Royal Thai Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Marcus Perkins, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Supowit Wongaseris, Royal Thai Navy. Colonel William Perry, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Ennis Makacher, Tunisian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Petkus, United States Marine Corps with distinction. Lieutenant Commander, or Lieutenant Colonel Salim al Qatari, United Arab Emirates Navy. Captain Travis Petzel, United States Navy with highest distinction. Major James Cox, United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Sean Phipps, United States Space Force. <laughs> Lieutenant Christopher Bobach, United States Navy with distinction. Colonel James Pinson, United States Air Force. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Martin Denin, United States Navy. Captain Joseph Palmer, United States Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Natalie Lamb, United States Marine Corps. Natalie. Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Pol Polifico, United States Army National Guard. Lieutenant Commander Le Duong, Vietnam's People's Navy. Lieutenant Commander Patrick Rawlinson, United States Navy. From the Maritime Advanced Warfighting School, Commander Joseph Abruz, United States Navy with distinction. Commander Seth Rainey, United States Navy with distinction. Major Daniel Adams, United States Air Force. Commander Amanda Richards, United States Navy with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Brian Boyles, United States Navy. Colonel Marlon Ringo, United States Army. Major Sean Callahan, United States Army with distinction. Colonel Christopher Rivers, United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Stephen Coburn, United States Navy. Commander Aaron Robertson, United States Navy. Major Heather Connor, United States Marine Corps. Ms. Nicole Ross, Department of the Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander John Cosimano, United States Navy. Dr. Christopher Rojas, <laughs> Defense Contract Management Agency. Lieutenant Commander Johnny Dubois, United States Navy. Ms. Nicole Schrader, Department of State. Lieutenant Commander Daryl Deitenbach, United States Navy. Colonel Seth Schweischinger, United States Air Force with distinction. Major Barbara Dyer, United States Space Force. Commander Richard Shapiro, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Alexander Ng, United States Navy. Colonel Casey Schuff, United States Army. Major Nathan Foster, United States Army National Guard. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Simon, United States Marine Corps with distinction. Major Patrick Hassett, United States Marine Corps with highest distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Steven Slagle, United States Space Force with distinction. Major Lydia Hershey, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Colonel David Snipes, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant Commander Robert Jamison, United States Navy, highest distinction. Colonel Thomas Taylor, United States Air Force. Major David Jordan, United States Army. Colonel Michael Thompson, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Brittany Keith, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander David Vasquez, United States Navy. Major Sean Kelly, United States Air Force. Commander Shelton Viola, United States Navy. Lieutenant Colonel William Kennedy, United States Marine Corps Reserve. Commander Jordan Weinshank, United States Navy. Major George King, United States Air Force, with distinction. 
Lieutenant Colonel Nathan Willis, United States Marine Corps, with highest distinction. Major Daniel Loiko, United States Marine Corps, with distinction. Lieutenant Colonel John Wisecup, United States Air Force. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Nicholas Mahalik, United States Navy. Colonel Graham Wood, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Brian Osborne, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Angelina Woodburn, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Alfredo Perez, United States Navy. From the College of Naval Command and Staff, Major Thomas Adams, United States Air Force with distinction. Major Francis Rivera Torres, United States Army. Ms. Michelle Almond, National Roscoe. Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Lepido. Lieutenant Commander Lapito Roscoe, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Jan Paul Amposta, United States Navy. Major Jonathan Sheff, United States Marine Corps. Major Raynell Agnes, United States Air National Guard. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Casey Smith, United States Navy. Commander John Bartis, United States Navy. Commander Derek Sutton, United States Navy. Mr. Daniel Beams, United States Government. Lieutenant Commander Ramey Tarek, United States Navy. Mr. Marcos Barahona, Department of Defense. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Jeremy Thurman, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Colleen Benjamin, United States Navy. Major Anthony Vanderzee, United States Marine Corps, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Michael Benjamin, United States Navy. From the College of Distance Education, Lieutenant Commander Brianna Allman, United States Navy Reserve. Major Christopher Billups, United States Space Force. Lieutenant Commander Caitlin A. E. Edmondson, Judge, Agile Gen Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander jo Joseph Blinsky, United States Coast Guard. Lieutenant Damian S. Antonioso, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Ekafal Boraboon, United States Navy. Mrs. Olivia L. G. Babin, United States House of Representatives. Mr. Brandon Brekhuizen, Department of State. Mr. David Michael Ballard, Government Accountability Office. Mr. Matthew Briggs, Department of State. Lieutenant Nasha F. Bogman, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Thomas Bright, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Robert L. Baxter, Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy, with distinction. Major Ryan Broderick, United States Marine Corps. Mr. James K. Beatty, Department of Defense, Office of Inspector General. Lieutenant Robert Brown, United States Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Stephanie A. Benjamin, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Roger Brown, United States Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Sarah Ann C. Bennett, Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Sarah Brown, United States Navy. Mr. John W. Byer III, United States Senate. Major Adam Burns, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Nicholas J. Brissy, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Caleb Burrow, United States Navy with distinction. Mr. Michael Callison, United States House of Representatives with distinction. Major Grace Butler, United States Space Force with highest distinction. Mr. Ryan T. Carney, United States House of Representatives. Lieutenant Commander Victoria Caldwell, United States Navy. Commander Dean C. Chang, Dental Corps, United States Naval Reserve. Lieutenant Commander William Caldwell, United States Navy. Mr. Timothy J. Corley, United States Senate. Lieutenant Commander Cameron Carraway, United States Navy. Ms. Kathleen B. Crane, United States House of Representatives. Lieutenant Commander Cody Cartwright, United States Navy. Mr. Jameson D. Cunningham, U.S. China Economic Security Review Commission, with highest distinction. Major James Cashwell, United States Air Force. Mrs. Katrina R. D. Degal, Naval Special Warfare Command. Mr. Norashai Shwariwong, Naval Surface Warfare Center. Commander John M. Downing, 
Nurse Corps, U.S. Navy Reserve. Major Kenneth Chesney, United States Army Reserve. Lieutenant Annie R.B. Ellis, United States Coast Guard. Major Shannon Ciccarelli Newton, United States Army National Guard. Lieutenant Ryan M. Feingold, Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Adam Cohey, United States Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Claire E. Fitzpatrick, Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy. Mr. Matthew Cole, Naval Surface Warfare Center, with highest distinction. Yeah. Ms. Christina M. Fultz, Department of Homeland Security. Lieutenant Commander Jason Coons, United States Navy, with highest distinction. Mr. Brian J. Gardner, United States Secret Service. Lieutenant Nathan Crawford, United States Navy. Ms. Ashley L. Jugletga, United Defense Threat Reduction Agency. Ms. Alyssa Cunningham and Toby, Naval Surface Warfare Systems Command. Mr. Benjamin R. Germano, Department of State. Woo! Lieutenant Commander Stephen Cuevas, United States Navy. Mr. Aaron L. Glass, Nuclear Regulatory Commission with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Andrew Cummings, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Christopher D. Glass II, United States Navy Reserve with distinction. Mr. David DeFiore, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, with distinction. Captain Brian M. Gossage, United States Army Reserve. Major Mason Dill, United States Marine Corps, with highest distinction. <laughs> Mr. Jean Francois E. Hernandez, United States Commission on Security and Cooperation in Europe. Major Robert Doyle, United States Army. <laughs> Ms. Lydia M. Hofstetter, United States Naval War College. Major Elliot Eggert, United States Marine Corps, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander William S. Howard, United States Navy Reserve, with distinction. Major Matthew Fecky, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Esther L. Kangas, Medical Service Corps, United States Navy, with distinction. Commander Matthew Felton, United States Navy. Mr. Hunter R. Kelly, United States Senate. Major Cole Farron, United States Marine Corps Reserve. Ms. Leah A. Keefe, Privacy and Civil Liberties, Liberties Oversight Board. Commander Colin Fennegan, United States Navy. Captain Mike Rit Michael W. Kernan, United States Marine Corps. Major Marcus Fisher, United States Army. Mr. Adam A. Kozlowski, United States Senate. Major Victoria Fort, United States Air Force. Mr. Nawid M. Lemar, Department of Health and Human Services. Lieutenant Commander Mark Fashon, United States Navy with distinction. Mrs. Sabari Levy, Department of State. Major Clay Franz, United States Air Force. Ms. Maureen Luna Long, United States Government Accountability Office. Lieutenant Commander Charles Gerke, United States Navy. Mrs. Chelsea K. Monsu Lynch, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Major Mary Giddings, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Spencer E. Marion, United States Navy. Major Jared Gray, United States Army. Mr. Stephen Markowski, National Cemetery Administration. Major Eric Grimes, United States Air Force. Commander Charlene J. McKee, Nurse Corps, United States Navy Reserve. Major Killian Armstrong Guarino, United States Army. Lieutenant Haley A. McWilliams, U United States Coast Guard, retired. Major Francis Martin Gadez, United States Air Force with highest distinction. Miss Jacqueline V. Meek, United States Senate. Major Inchul Ha, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant Commander sure. Methal N. Modi, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Taylor Haggerty, United States Navy. Mr. Nicholas A. Montabano, Department of Defense. Major Corinne Halbrunner, United States Army. 
Lieutenant Commander Andrew W. Morse, United States Coast Guard Reserve. Major Jonathan Hansen, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Commander William V. Motri, United States Navy. Major Paul Harloff, United States Air Force. Mr. Daniel L. Nelson, Department of State. Lieutenant Commander Jake Harris, United States Navy. Lieutenant Brendan E. Noto, United States Navy Reserve, with distinction. Major Krista Harrop, United States Army. Mr. Matthew S. Oldham, Department of the Army, Office of the Chief of Public Affairs. Major Christopher Hartman, United States Air Force, with distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Kenneth R. Osburn, Jr., Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. Major Dylan Handy, United States Army. Lieutenant Carlos A. Pagan, Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy, with distinction. Major Alexander Hernandez, United States Army, with highest distinction. Mr. Matthew P. Perone, United States House of Representatives. Lieutenant Commander Jason Hickman, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander P. G. Pham, Medical Corps, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Ryan Hogan, United States Navy Reserve. Dr. Kristen N. Pindnock, Government Accountability Office with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Nicholas Hurley, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Cole H. Pipkin, United States Navy Reserve with, high, with distinction. Mr. Julio Orlando, United States Special Operations Command. Lieutenant Marcellus L. Posey, United States Coast Guard Reserve. Major Joshua Isom, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Stephan D.B. Powers, United States Navy Reserve. Major Amber Jacobs, United States Army. Commander Frederick D. Pugh, the second, United States Coast Guard. Lieutenant Commander Brett Jansen, United States Navy. Lieutenant Venus Y. Rebos, United States Navy. Major J Trexler Jason, United States Army with distinction. <laughs> Mrs. Robbie S. Saunders, United States Senate with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Anthony Joseph, United States Navy with distinction. Miss Michelle H. Sheein, Department of State, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Charles Kaiser, United States Navy. Mrs. Margaret E. Schmidt, United States House of Representatives. Major Dennis Kelly, United States Army National Guard, with distinction. Ms. Hannah M. Schwartz, United States Senate, with distinction. Jonathan, Jonathan Keneally, United States Army. Mrs. Demery L. Scott Grego, United States Senate. Major Galen King, United States Army with distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Rebecca M. Salias, United States Navy. Major Michael Knight, United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Brittany R. Stromko, Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy with distinction. Lieutenant Stefan Koberl, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander J. Grant Sutpin, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. Mr. Jason Coker, United States Government. Dr. Jessica L. Tabaka, Navy Recruiting Command, with distinction. Major Kevin Colbay, United States Marine Corps, with highest distinction. Mr. Benjamin K. Tardif, United States House of Representatives with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Stephen Coy, United States Navy. Lieutenant Trevor A. Torres, Supply Corps, United States Navy Reserve. Major Samuel Kramer, United States Army. Commander Diana T. Tranu, Medical Service Corps, United States Navy. Major William Lambeth, United States Marine Corps with distinction. Ms. Jenny M. Chow, F-35 Joint Program Office. 
Lieutenant Commander Christopher Lay, United States Navy. Mrs. Sarah E. Turcott, Defense Counterintelligence and Security Agency with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Melanie Lucarose, United States Navy. Ms. Camilla B. Vogt, United States Senate, with distinction. Commander Nicholas Lowe, United States Navy. Mr. William R. Weber, Office of Naval Intelligence. Major Claire Marlowe, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Michael M. Weigel, United States Navy Reserve. Major Alexander Matthews, United States Air Force. Miss Mickey B. Werner, United States Senate. Major Seth Merrigan, United States Army. Miss Grace E. White, United States House of Representatives. Major Dylan Metzler, United States Marine Corps with distinction. Mrs. Natalie R. Worth, Department of State. Lieutenant Commander Rostislav Myerson, United States Navy Reserve. Mr. Alec J. Yon, Government Accountability Office. Lieutenant Commander Hugh Mitchell, United States Navy with distinction. L Lieutenant Commander David A. Lane, Ju Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Ryan Moore, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Luke Moraney, United States Navy. Major, Major Justin Matenko, United States Marine Corps. Major Lieutenant John Oliver, United States Army with distinction. Lieutenant Colonel James Marquez, United States Army Reserve. Major jo Jacob Osborne, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Tiffany Pearson, United States Navy. Lieutenant Eddie Puthaboon, United States Navy. Commander Patrick Powers, United States Coast Guard with distinction. Major Timothy Richard, United States Air Force. Major Michael Rios, United States Army. Mr. Jason Rivlin, Department of the Army. Major Sean Robertson, United States Army. Major Sean Roach, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Jose Renel Rodriguez, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Adam Romero, United States Navy. Major Randolph Rohde, United States Army. Major Kevin Russell, United States Army. Major Christina Salinas, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Adam Samsel, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Matthew Schwears, United States Navy. Major Paul Shia, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Brian Shields, United States Coast Guard. Major Carmela Shivers, United States Marine Corps. Major Patrick Smith, United States Army with distinction. 
Major Joseph Spada, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Sterling Spencer, United States Navy. Major Tyler Stratton, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Brian Striffler, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Robert Taylor, United States Navy. <laughs> Major William Thimmel, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant Commander Alex Today, United States Navy. Major Kyle Todd, United States Air Force. <coughs> Lieutenant Commander Taylor Toombs, United States Navy Reserve. Mr. Keith Truong, Defense Contract Management Agency with distinction. Major Austin Twombly, United States Army. <laughs> Major Andrew Utt, United States Marine Corps with distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Christina Valladeras, United States Navy. <laughs> Major Christopher Van Cleef, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Christopher Bijalta Salamanca, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Patrick Vivian, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander William Vu, United States Navy. <laughs> Major Benjamin Watson, United States Army. Major Samuel Wetzelar, United States Marine Corps. Major Benjamin Weimers, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Mark Wan, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Daniel Woods, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Kenneth Young, United States Navy. Major Christine Zimmerman, United States Army. Major Robert Zimmerman, United States Army. Major Aaron Owens, United States Army. Admiral Garvin will now deliver his closing remarks. How about another round of applause for our graduates? Thank you again, Admiral Swift, for your valuable insights and your time today. Yesterday, Marine Corps Lieutenant General Olson said he felt he was required to mention three things when addressing this student body. Guadalcanal, Mahan, and Corbett. I thought about that. But as the President of the United States Naval War College, I think it should be Mahan, Corbett, and Luce. But then again, I am biased. Now, of course, any time the Marine Corps mentions the Guadalcanal time, we bring up the Battle of Midway, which we just celebrated the 82nd anniversary of. 
So just prior to the Battle of Midway, one of our former presidents, Admiral Raymond Spruance, was suddenly thrust into command when Admiral Bull Halsey fell ill. Spruance's tactical brilliance led to a decisive victory against the Japanese fleet, marking a turning point in the Pacific War. Additionally, Spruance's leadership during the Marianas Campaign, particularly the taking of Saipan, placed U.S. forces within striking distance of Japan, which pressurized the Imperial Japanese Navy to engage in the Battle of the Philippine Sea, where they were soundly defeated, crippling their naval air power. This step change enabled U.S. forces to conduct sustained aerial bombardments of Japan, underscoring the strategic importance of the Marianas and hastening the end of World War II. Admiral Spruance's modesty and preference for privacy often kept him out of the public eye, but his impact on naval warfare remains profound. After his wartime service, Admiral Spruance returned to the Naval War College as its president from 1946 to 1948 imparting the lessons he had learned through his extensive, hard-fought experience. He emphasized continuous learning, ensuring the curriculum evolved to meet the changing character of naval warfare. But how did Spruance accomplish this? He first made his mark at the Naval War College as a student from 1926 to 1927, and then later as an instructor in the 1930s. His time here was foundational, providing him with the intellectual tools and strategic framework that would later become vital in his career. Now graduates, as you prepare to return to your operational tours, consider how Admiral Spruance's journey reflects the path that you might take. And maybe you're sitting out there wondering, is the president really saying that one of us might be the next Spruance? Well, the simple answer is yes. You may also be wondering what you could possibly have in common. But like you, many of you, I won't say all of you, but many of you, Admiral Spruance was not a big fan of writing. <laughs> he only did so when absolutely necessary. While he demonstrated an exceptional aptitude for strategic thinking and naval tactics, he initially struggled while studying logistics. But where did his studies take him? His rigorous study of the principles of naval warfare and logistics ultimately shaped his approach to command and leadership. Similarly, your time here has equipped you with critical thinking skills, strategic framework, and an understanding of naval operations. Like Spruance, you may face moments where bold action informed by strategic foresight is crucial. Whether in times of peace or conflict, the lessons you've learned here will guide you. Just as Admiral Spruance returned to contribute to the institution that shaped him, you too may find opportunities to give back, sharing your experiences and insights with the War College so that we may use your lessons to better inform today's decision makers and educate tomorrow's leaders. As you leave this institution and take on new roles and responsibilities, know that you carry with you the legacy of those who came before you. You are part of a continuum of learning that has defined the Naval War College for generations. Put simply, graduates, here is my charge to you. Keep reading, keep listening, keep learning, Keep in touch with your classmates. And always be ready, because you never know when the hand of fate may tap you on the shoulder like it did Spruance before Midway. And to the families and friends here today, I thank you again for being the foundation of your graduates' strength and sharing in this momentous occasion. Graduates, bravo Zulu. Congratulations on a job well done, and I look forward to seeing the fleet. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral. As a part of a time-honored tradition at the U.S. Naval War College, we will sing the service songs of our nation's armed forces. We ask that each military and civilian service member, veterans and family members, please stand as their service song is played. Please remain standing until the completion of all service songs. For those of you following along, the words to the service songs are in the brochure that were on your seats when you arrived. Colonel Lawrence Brown, Senior Army Advisor and all, all Army veterans, staff, faculty, students, and their families, we wish you a happy birthday. 
please rise. Colonel Zachary Schmidt, Senior Marine Corps Advisor, and all Marine Corps veteran staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise. Colonel Rebecca Russo, Senior Air Force Advisor, and all Air Force veteran staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise. Space Force veterans, staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise. Captain Fred Birch, Senior Coast Guard Advisor, and all Coast Guard veteran staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise. Admiral Swift and all Navy veterans, staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise. If you are not already standing, please rise for the benediction and departure of the official party and dignitaries.
Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save, we thank you for each person here who represents a far larger community. This larger community will have a global impact and bring peace to war-torn lands. May the networks and friendships established here continue to flourish. Lord, your arm hath bound that restless wave to bring resolution to places of conflict. Bring the warfighter home to their loved ones and safety to the innocents. Protect those who are training and deploying. Give wisdom to the political leaders and discernment to their advisors. You bid the mighty ocean deep and you have called us out upon the ocean's waves. May those waves be avenues of fair trade, fair winds, and following seas. Oh, hear us as we cry to thee, we those warriors out upon your seas. In all your names we pray, amen. All military personnel, please cover. This concludes today's ceremony. We thank you for joining us today. Congratulations to all the graduates. Safe travels to everyone. <laughs>